I was really attached, att attracted is the better word. I was really attracted to Malcolm X's life and the way he carried himself and the way he behaved. And I thought to myself, if there's anyone on the face of this earth that I'd like to model myself after, it would be this man, Malcolm X. And I was really attracted to him and really, really, just really uh, enthralled, if you want to say that, by his personality and by the way he was. But I didn't know how to really be like, because I knew that in order to be like him, I had to be a Muslim. But I really didn't know how to do that. Like, I really didn't understand that, how to become a Muslim. How do you... I knew that they worshipped a God called Allah. I knew that they believed in a Prophet called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I didn't know how to... how to bring myself from here, where, the, where I was, to here, where the Muslims are. I didn't have a bridge to unite the two. I didn't have that. I didn't have the means to go about doing that. So I kind of just put it to the back burner and I said, oh well, you know, if this Allah that they worship is, is, is true, is real, then he's going to show me a way. And I just left it at that. And I continued my life, I continued my wrestling, I got into high school, ended up winning heavyweight titles. Eventually my final amateur season was a 30 and 0, 30 wins without a loss season, which was very proud of, uh, it's, it's an accomplishment that I'm still proud of today, alhamdulillah. And in 96, 1996, I applied for a job at a computer, uh, computer camp that is mainly geared towards blind people and visually impaired people. And visually impaired people are basically people who can see a little bit. Blind people are like me, who are absolutely, totally blind. <clears throat> so I applied, I sent my resume. I didn't think too much. I was working at a bakery at the time. I was sweating in the heat making bread for people. And I was really... It's a very interesting time in my life. I got, a, I got a call back from these people at this computer camp in Toronto, which is where they were located, and they told me that we'd love to have you come and work with us. So I was happy. They're going to pay my expenses. They're going to pay me a salary. Plus, they were going to pay all my, uh, my airfare, plus my basically everything that I had to deal with from the time I left to the time I came home, plus the salaries. I was, I was overjoyed. You know, 21-year-old kid, I'm going to the big city of Toronto from the small town of Lower Sackville, Nova Scotia. Very big, huge jump for me. So I went, alhamdulillah, and I met this sister, and I won't say her name, Jazallah khair, I won't, I won't do that to her, because I know she'll be very upset with me if I mention her name, but I met her. She was working there. And I asked her what her name was, and she told me, and I thought, what a strange name. <laughs> so this name is weird. It's not normal, it's not Janet or Denise or Lisa, it's strange. What kind of name is that? I said, it's Arabic. And automatically, I just thought, Arabic and Muslims, Arab, Muslims speak Arabic. So I asked her, I said, are you a Muslim? She said, yeah, I am. And all of a sudden, everything just kind of came back quickly, as quickly as it, as it left to ask all these different questions about being a Muslim. So I asked her, and I must have asked her five, six different questions in a matter of two minutes. I wanted to know everything. And she told me to relax, right? natural reaction to that question. She went and got a book from home or from someplace and a few days later we kind of sat and talked about Islam in detail. Basically about the five pillars of Islam. Shadu an la ilaha illallah, shadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, first pillar. Salah is the second pillar, zakah is the third pillar. Fasting in the month of Ramadan is the fourth pillar. Hajj al bayt to the holy city of Mecca is the fifth pillar. And everything that I heard made sense. And I was brought up as a Roman Catholic, Irish Catholic, if you want to say that, Irish background. So I really, you know, I believed in God. It's not that I didn't believe in God. I, I recognized that there was a God. I didn't have any doubt in that. And this sister, again, Jazallah khair, she laid it out to me from that, from that book about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, him being the last messenger of Allah and the seal of all prophets. And at that moment, I didn't really... I've always been a person to accept. If, if you told me that I had to do 30 push-ups a day in order to be in shape, and I knew that, that, I knew that to be true, I would do 30. I wasn't a person to argue with things that I knew to be true. So when I knew that it was something accurate, immediately I said it. 
Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship on or above the earth or above the heavens except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I further bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is indeed without a doubt Allah's last messenger, seal of all prophet. And that's sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that was basically in a in a, in a nutshell and some detail how I was how I was uh, introduced to Islam and I'd like to really go into some issue and say that no one really came to me and told me about Islam. No person came to me and said, you know, my name is Muhammad. I'd like to really talk to you about something. No one really did that. <clears throat> it was from a dead person, Malcolm X, rahmatullah alayhi, that I got my da'wah from. So it's important that um, we, we get into this issue of doing good deeds that people will remember after you because you never know who will actually take that and who will run with it. Malcolm X died 10 years before I was even alive. You know? <clears throat> and it's his story that by the permission of Allah caused me to enter Islam. I didn't know him. And I don't know anyone related to him. So, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, My brothers, uh, my sisters, SubhanAllah, when we uh, think about the fact here that Abu Hafsa is telling us, brother Abu Hafsa never got an invitation to Islam. That means we're not doing our homework properly. A dead person, may Allah honor him and unite us with him with the, in the Jannah, mm. Malcolm X, gave da'wah. Gave da'wah because he was an example, because he did practice what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared in the Quran. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who's better in speech than those who call to Allah and they do good deeds and they say, I am among the Muslims. So, Brother Malcolm X, Rahmatullah Ali, may Allah shower him with mercy, did practice this. And he would lead us to another interesting matter that I have witnessed uh, Many times Abu Hafsa, whether Jerome Clare, Abdul Malik, reading the Quran. And reading the Quran in a way that you could never tell that he is not an Arabic person. Means he has no accent. When I look at his Quran, I see it's just blank pages and I'm willing also to show my brothers and my sisters what's so called the braille. The braille here which is blank pages with some kind of we want to call it engraved but it's not engraved what do we call dots. dots right and if you could just focus you will see it looks totally blank or uh, or something that could this be a guidance here? Now, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided you to learn the Qur'an and to learn the language, my brother? And later on, if you may hold the Qur'an, later on I would like you to read from the Qur'an. Absolutely. right? But if you could tell us a bit about the Braille and how Allah guided you to read from the Qur'an. When I came back from this camp in, in Toronto, I, I went back to Nova Scotia and I was, I was given a list of Muslims to, to call and different masajid when I was here from the Muslims here in Toronto. I was given a, a, a directory, if you want to call it that, of Muslims in Nova Scotia. So I, I contacted them and brothers um, basically adopted me. I, I ended up learning how to make salah when I was there. I ended up learning how to make wudu, of course, and, and fasting in Ramadan and various things, Fatiha. And I got a call one day. Someone had told me that there was a Braille Qur'an available. And at the time I was only listening to tapes. I was hearing Arabic Qur'ans from, from different qadis and different people. And that, I mean that was alhamdulillah, that was fine for me. I didn't have any issue with that. But when someone told me that there was a Braille Qur'an, that I would be able to actually hold it and read it myself, I, I, was, I, was, I was astonished. And I, I agreed that they would send it to me, Jazamallah khair. They did that. I went to pick it up, and it's actually this this uh, volume. It's only one part of the of the Quran that I have. There's actually six books like this. 
So the, the Quran that I have is divided into six volumes And this is one of them, this is the first one So I went and this is the first thing I, I picked up And I opened it and I thought to myself I'm going to be able to just read it and it's going to be in English And lo and behold it was actually in a language that I couldn't read Interesting I was, I was shocked, honestly I was very shocked but isn't it same uh, particular uh, uh, brailles? Like I mean, braille. It's the same dots in a sense, but braille itself can be written in many different languages. So the Arabic braille is totally it's different totally than different the English than braille. The English braille. And in order for you to properly read it, you have to look at it like that. Subhanallah. Did you know this in the beginning, or you just thought you could just uh, start reading and you'll understand?